Right, not. That's right. We would have been on our way if, it, if he had just let us alone. He says, if your story is true, and you're here to test Jandar's security, it would behoove me to kill you all, deliver you to Jandar, and show him that his security is faultless. I have much to gain by doing this. Shall we continue in this farce? Or will you tell me why you're really here? Can I make an in can I make an insight check? Uh, to what end? To see, like. <sighs> Go ahead and make the check. Yeah, I'm trying to see how hostile he really is to us. Like, I'm trying to see if is there any chance that we can talk our way out of this. Nice. The way right. he's talking, this fire giant is not one of Jandar's men. But you get the sense that he's trying to look for ways to seek Jandar's favor. He needs that for some reason. Yes, yeah, so this is a 22. So that's what you get with the insight check. This is not one of Jandar's men, mm -hmm. but he's somebody who needs Jandar's help with something. Okay, I'll ask him. Yeah, I'll ask him. What does he need? What does he need help with? I mean, maybe we can help you. I mean, you, need, you say you need John Dar's favor, but you could have ours. And he replies that he does not know you. And he doesn't know your purpose here. And he looks around at the room at the wounds that you guys have suffered, especially at Happy on the ground, nomming down on his goodberry. Mm -hmm. And he says, and from a position of strength, I find you wanting. The one turns to Riot and... And taps his head. Ah, uh, right. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do that again. Can't do message. Oh, it's a message. Yeah. Okay. I, I I thought he was suggesting that you cast a text box. No. Yeah. And and, and when, when you when you question when you mm -hmm. probe El Ciclone, he he responds. <laughs> right. Bargain with is, me. What is it, Ciclone? I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Bargain <laughs> with me. Okay. Keelian speaks up and he says, Jandar's favor is not worth having, and kind of stretches out on the bed a bit. The priest, who is making a show of unhooking his mace from his back, tells you in normal circumstances I would agree. He looks at the dead drow on the ground. Says, I ordered my men not to intervene when you attack the elves. You are already in my debt. It's true. So I ask again, for the last time, what is your purpose here? We're here to take Jandar's property. And it strikes me that you can you and I you and us can come to an arrangement. Because if we take more than than we are planning, and we give some back to you, and you return it to it, to him, that's favor, right? He shakes his head and says that it's not Jandar's property he wants. No, I understand. But if you if you return to him some of what was taken, that gets you what you, get, gets you, what you want, right? He says something in giant to his two retainers. The one picks himself up. He's been brushing off his wounds. He's going to start moving to the back of the room. You guys still all have reactions if you want to get jiggy with it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they start moving out of the room. And he says, Come join us by the crystal below. We'll negotiate there. And I will judge whether your lives are worth sparing. All right. I'll come with him. I will and right while, while they're going riot messages, Cyclone. That's a terrible idea. Don't ever suggest that again. I will shift back and follow. So how do you guys get down the forty foot drop? And keep in mind that the giants are watching and judging your every move. Can we slide down the? It's two 
too steep. It's not much of a slope. They get down by hooking themselves around with their hands, and then for them, it's just like a 15-foot drop. <laughs> Which causes three resounding crashes through the caves. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys get down? Um... Well, we've got that climbing gear still. I'll sequel in response to Riot's message. Jandar's a smug asshole. He won't kill me immediately. All right, I give shit. give the rope back to him. I give the rope back to him to Riot. Okay. Wait, does Riot have it? Uh, when Keelian stole your stuff back, he got a rope. That's right. Oh yeah, and sure. He gave it. Uh, he gave it the riot. All right. So you lash a rope around a local stalagmite. Mm-hmm. Everybody repels down the forty foot cliff. Are there any uh, are there any like flat surfaces on the cliff, like a like a little ledge or something? Uh, not really. On the way, right. I'll stick on. Then yeah, I'll, his, I'll just his rope bandages it down. and robe. Coming out of this large cavern here, it's a. 60 or 70 foot high basalt here, cavern. Back, and you see signs of it haven't been worked in places. Some of the walls here are uh, are straighter and cleaner than walls elsewhere in the caves. This northern wall looks pretty flat. The cliff that you guys just came down looks like it was worked in a particular way. The uh, A few black stalagmites jut up from the floor and the 40-foot ledge you guys just climbed down. To the west, this object here is a 20-foot tall, brilliantly colored orange crystal formation. And the way it builds itself up out of the earth, it resembles a giant flame licking at the ceiling high above. Frozen flame. Looking this way, you see another curtain of flame, like you saw up north. What was the name of the fire giant we met in, uh, in the city of Brass? That, we that was. I had to look at my notes. Big Papa Fire. Big Papa Wang fire. That was not it. Uh, Kon- Konar Zudvag. Yeah. Konar Zudvag. And Kilian asks them, "Do you guys know Konan Zudvag?" And the priest responds that he knows him to be a coward. Oh. What, all fire giants know each other? (laughs) And he replies to Mahogany that he knows Zudvog from his days in service to the old king. That's all Sidious. Sounds like you two have a history. What is your name, anyway? Let's let's make introductions. The priest introduces himself as Olostro. Okay. And what god do you serve, Alistair? He has the pleasure of serving the fire god called Emix. Enix? Emix. Emix, okay. The Dragon Quest guys. No. No, that's Enix. He's saying yeah. Emix. Yeah. <laughs> He's serving IMAX. <laughs> <laughs> He says that during the king's reign, King Aesol Sodius, the unearthed the flame of Enix, this orange crystal behind him, in the caverns underneath the smiling rock, and that Olostro made a pilgrimage to the smiling rock in order to act as the flame's caretaker during the coup when Jandar seized control of the rock and some of the fire giants within. Mm-hmm. He had no particular use or reverence for this crystal. And Olostro negotiated the ability to make infrequent pilgrimages to make sure that the crystal had been tended to properly. But he has suspicions that Jandar is going to relocate the crystal or sell it or destroy it or otherwise hamper it in some way. And he believes it has something to do with the drow who are here as his guests. So that's his conundrum. Mm-hmm. 
he feels that if he kills you all, turns your dead intruder bodies over to Jandar, that he can bargain for uh, continued safe passage to do his rituals before the crystal. So if you want them to not kill you and turn your intruder corpses over to Xandar, you're going to have to barter for with something more valuable than that. I don't know. Death sounds pretty good right now. Well, you already you already bartered for this once before, didn't you? For the ability to travel to this rock, and now you're saying he's going to break his agreement. What makes you think he'll keep it this time? <laughs> he tells you that trusting the Tao is always a very tricky proposition. By their nature, they are hard and unyielding. They follow a course of action to infinity. They cannot be swayed by it. Theirs is the nature of rock, unchanging over the eons. But Jean Dar, that was the uh, prospect he made with his first agreement with Jean Dar. He took the man at his word and felt since he's a Tao, he will have that same... Uh, privilege into perpetuity. But Jandar has made a lot of changes to the, his power structure in recent years. He's been making a lot of pushes in a lot of strange ways. And he has been making uh, a lot of business decisions that require him to use a lot of coin. And he feels like, without and much evidence, Olostro admits, that mm. this puts the crystal in jeopardy. To the fire giants, this crystal is a holy symbol. To Jean Dar, it's a price tag. The reason Olostro has changed his mind recently is there would have been no call for Jean Dar to ever make an alliance with uh, such base creatures as Drow. And yet, this has happened. He does seem to be on the on the point of desperation. We've heard other stories about dealings, recent ones that uh, he's been overextending himself on. And he says, perhaps his desperation is the source of his change of heart, so to speak. Mm. What if what if Smiling Rock came under new ownership? And he asked, who's? That's a good question. Part of who we're representing is uh, a genie called uh, Xerxes the Hollow, who wouldn't reveal to us her clients. And he says that the, uh, the jinn, mm -hmm. by nature, are the opposite of the Tao, that their words can never be trusted, specifically because the winds change so often. What pulls her one direction one day will pull her another direction the next. But it's not her that would be taking over. It's, it's someone we don't know. That's the problem. She's the, in the intermediary here. And he asks... My goodness. Oh, Is shit. that thunder? Am I hearing thunder? That yeah. was thunder. thunder. Wow. It's that not was... raining. Bright, clear, cloudless skies. <laughs> Florida, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was either thunder or the house next door exploded. <laughs> uh, he asks if you have any evidence that this unseen beneficiary is an Efridi or a fire giant. Right, Trex, I couldn't begin to tell you. I, I, I'm aware that we're bargaining from a pretty weak position here, but that's that's the best I've got. And one of the fire giants standing next to him just kind of gives you a scoff. This is the one, by the way, that you've reduced to 11 hit points. Right. <laughs> the one who his priest friend hasn't healed. Yeah. And Riot, Riot shoots him a look that's on the verge of being a vicious mockery type of look. <laughs> <laughs> He asks, what have you come here to steal? What haven't we come here to steal? 
Uh, <laughs> Fortison, some wealth, some slaves, some harem members. It, it's the further, the deeper we get into this, the list goes on and on. So you are aimless and unfocused thieves. You're treasure hunters, thrill seekers. Oh no! Every one of those things is for a specific purpose and a specific person. We've just got a long list. Things get more complicated. Apparently, when you're trying to overthrow a slave lord, everyone wants in on the action. And Killian says that. <laughs> Can we all just keep it for ourselves? I don't know. How could we ensure that you get what you want out of this deal? He tells you that if the Smiling Rock were to change management, if Jandar were to be brought down, and some new entity with strength were to t take and hold it, <laughs> that would probably be good for his purposes, provided the else. person who mm -hmm. takes it is a native of the Plane of Fire. I tell you what else you could offer, if we're if we're able to thin his security enough, to the point where he might be, this new ownership might uh, might need men. You could offer your fire giants. You, <laughs> you saw what work they made of us. Just one. And the fire giant pipes up, and I'm drunk. <laughs> and he's drunk. The priest responds that uh, Imix forbids him or his men from raising arms against the sons of the plane of fire. That killing his own kin, the, the fire giants or Efridi or fire genasi in Jandar's uh, employ mm -hmm. would be a greater loss than the loss of the crystal. It would be a loss of his own faith. Knock it off, Zeus! Oh, I see what you mean, but I'm not asking you to help us. What I'm saying is, well, hmm, maybe that wouldn't work either. I was thinking about offering your men to security against people like us for the new ownership. And he says, what better way to do that than to prove my men can deal with people like you? Well, I think that's been fairly well proven. He says, here's what I'm prepared to offer you. He says, we will not go out of our way to report your intrusion to Jandar's men. Mm -hmm. But if asked, neither will we protect you. And right looks around at the others and said, fair? Pogadil's say seems fine to me. We've been making a bit of a mess. If anyone thinks to ask, they can probably prove it already. He also says that his position of weakness in negotiation with Jandar precludes him from taking out his drow allies himself. Obviously, the drow in the caves, he does not consider them to be a match for his fire giants. Right. They weren't even a match for us. Look out for the fire giants to go apart. And he says, the more of the drow heads you deliver to me, mm -hmm. the safer my position becomes. All right. What we'll put that on the list. What are the drow Hammers, doing quarters, here anyway? Slaves, wealth, and drow heads. Oh yeah, just to be clear, do you actually want the heads? <laughs> he clarifies his position that the more drow you kill the better his position is here. <laughs> he has no actual use for their heads. See, this yeah. is why you need to ask these things. Well, that's why Mahogany needs to ask these right. things. I think everybody else got it. <laughs> and I don't know, right, I saw that list. Right now, speaking of drow, who's this Jisla's person you mentioned? She is their priestess. She is... I don't know her dealings with Jandar. I don't know why he has brought them here. I suspect it has something to do with the drow's considerable slave trade on the prime material plane. We'll wait for I'm you to be done. It's okay. That's fine. That's we'll just, so menacing. We'll just, I'm not going to lie. The, the thunder in the background is actually kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, until my power goes out. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah, know. That'll okay. be kind of cool. Uh, That's he says, Gisless is their priestess, and... Rather than worship a drow deity, 
the entity they worship is an abyssal lord called Taza Aziz. He believes they managed to get a foothold in Jandar's organization. The official reason is because the Smiling Rock contains an old temple to this abyssal lord. The right, actual reason that. is uh, he's making underhanded deals in the slave trade with these drows. They're here officially to uh, kind of set up a presence in this temple, but under the table, there's slave trading going on. And if that's true, <laughs> if evidence can be provided that that's the case, that would be a grave breach of the laws of the city of Brass. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. He would Red essentially point. be dodging tariffs, bringing slaves mm -hmm. in from off plane. Riot points back at in this direction. It says, mm -hmm. "Is that where the Tazazit shrine is? Then back there." He says no, and points upward. He says it's a constructed room. It's up in the fortress proper. He motions to the right. walls of flames, mm -hmm. and says that these walls are harder than stone. And they are but a fraction of the crystal's power. Okay. Right. It shows in the map. It says, could you, don't suppose you could point out which, uh, where the Tau Zizit shrine is on this, could you? Let me get the map. Which means I've got to open Imager. Thanks. I'm always here for you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I just I showed my other group this map and uh, they weren't as impressed as you guys were I like it a lot <laughs> well that's because haters gonna hate haters yeah. gonna hate it's true like I don't oh. hate the map uh oh what just say? Whoa. The, the, this looks like a oh I can't import the map because I go okay but I, what I gotta do then is gonna load signal Load up a map that doesn't have a bunch of crap on it. He looks at the map and he's like, what is this shit? Delete all the lines and then we can load this up. And let me get my actual map here so I make sure I tab you the right room. <laughs> would, it ha would it happen to be this room with the skulls and the question marks? Uh, he actually indicates this room here. Oh, okay. Yeah. The temple is large, and he believes it predates the surrounding structure. That this crude symbol... Who drew this map? This is terrible. <laughs> uh, well, this crude symbol now, so is one of the sigils of this abyssal lord, Taza Azit. That there are two entrances into the temple, one of which being the main doors, and then one of which opening up to a balcony level above, which is this green rectangle. Okay. He says this is where the drow have uh, kind of set up their base camp. This is where they're operating from. But he is able to tell you what this is. That there is a passageway in that corner that leads down to... i get my map back out. <laughs> There's a passageway in that corner uh, that connects down into the caves south of here. That would be the... Uh, I'll show you where it connects to because he knows. This here. If you were to go up those stairs... These yeah, stairs over here. This stairs stairs. Oh, okay. Update. If you were to take those stairs up, you would come out in front of the temple, but you would come out in an area that is heavily fortified by drow. They, they're they using necromancy, um, excuse me, and dark magics in oh, order to secure that, that area. And there are fell creatures guarding it that are part elf and part spider. Good All thing right. we didn't go up that way before. It's good to know, since uh, nice to know where where the drow are that you need us to kill. Um, 
Describe what the ro- uh, rock looks like. It's a brilliantly colored reddish orange crystal. Mm-hmm. It's about 20 feet high, and it looks like an enormous flame reaching up to lick the ceiling above. Helian is staring at it with admiration. He's only been half listening the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so nodal has got a T out, and I'm kind of afraid. Well, uh, no, the T was for something previous. Okay. Now I'm looking around for what he typed. <laughs> I didn't get to type anything. So the way you leave things with Alostro for now is you've made a lot of boastful claims of things you might be able to do to help his position. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't believe any of them in particular. He doesn't think you've got the strength to pull any of it off. But neither does he see any particular reason to stand in your way. For the moment. No, you can be a useful listen. bargaining chip to him, both alive and dead. No, Alistair, listen. In about a week, our friend here is going to pop back into existence, <laughs> and she'll really fuck some people up. Like she could have taken that giant. If Serenity had been here, that first fire giant would have went down. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure about the two fire giants behind him, one of which is a considerable spellcaster. <laughs> Um, yeah, do the fire giants see me staring at the crystal? Oh, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, they they, they probably just think you're admiring its beauty, not that you're uh, going to try to grab it and shove it in the solutions bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, can we shove that golden twisted nonsense <laughs> no. into the solutions bag? <laughs> Way too big. Uh, I don't know, I got a suit of armor in there. Yeah, one piece at a time. <laughs> yeah. We'll just cut it up. Oh, uh, when Serenity comes back, gold soft. So what's next? Riot asks Alostros, that room we, that room we just came from, um, is that where is that where the Jawa are staying? Some of their lesser warriors are making a barracks there. Uh, they have some kind of in the caves to the north, where you found the spider webs and the magic circle, mm-hmm. they're doing some sort of dealings there. He believes they're attempting to set up a teleportation circle, or maybe have already done so. We found one, yeah. Yeah, we we we, we dealt with that. That's we blocked not happening. It. You blocked it. How so? We put a block. Set on. a great big stone on top of it. <laughs> Literally blocked it. Because <laughs> well, that's a. Temporary stopgap, I suppose. Uh, he says that he suspects the majority of the drow force is then, therefore, being housed off plane somewhere. But Jandar having given permission to create that teleportation circle shows how deep that alliance with the drow is potentially forged. Yeah. Like, out of character, I know more than I do in character. <laughs> oh, out of character, I know that our plan won't work at all, and that there's a way better plan that we could do. <laughs> I'm going to take two minutes and run to the fridge and oh. grab a bit of the bubbly. I shall be right back. Uh, be thinking about what you're going to do after we're done with Giants. Yeah. All right, Killian, so, there's one more thing he wants to do with the Giants. Then, but we can do that when you get like back. We're not going to be able to rest here. Um, what do you think about going back to that room with the fire, grabbing the dude, and leaving the dungeon for the moment? That seems pretty good. The problem is that every time we go by that dragon, he's going to expect us to give him something. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we're not going to be able to afford it. (laughs) No fool one. Also, the teleportation circle thing, because I want to get this out of the way while Brick's away, Mm -hmm. is, uh, so if a teleportation circle doesn't work, you go to the nearest available space, so they would be perfectly fine. They would just pop out right there. But if we block the whole room, they would go into the lava. (laughs) I don't think you can block the whole room. Like, where's the nearest lava that they would have to go into? Literally right outside of it. It's like right Um, there. I don't know know if that's actual lava. It's actual lava. It's on the map. (laughs) You so, want to dig your way through. I know it's a shitty idea, but... I really, really like uh, Sprite when I get a chance to drink it. But once in a while, Peanut buys 7-Up. And it always... 
and like and I always forget like I really enjoy Seven Up. Like it's so much better than Sprite. Why do I not drink Seven Up? You know what's really good with Seven Up is you mix some sherbet in a blender with some Seven Up. Oh yeah, that's real good. Uh, but my mother does that for like parties and things. She makes like a big like non-alcoholic punch with Seven yeah. Up and like other kinds like pineapple juice, and then she just drops sherbet in it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's pretty good. And everybody heard non-alcoholic punch, and they're like, "What's the point?" The point is because she knows her eldest son doesn't like to drink, and that's why she does it non-alcoholic. <laughs> for me alone, everybody else drinks booze. <laughs> no, m- m- Nick, the, I know it's a shitty idea, but it may get us it, it may get us further in and mm-hmm. might actually buy some favor with these guys. Mm-hmm. Is okay. to turn me in for for a long rest right here. Seems like a bad bad plan. I yeah, I was planning to just ask him, "Do you mind like, do the drow ever come here? Do you mind if we sleep over in that corner over there? He tells you that he and his men will not lift a finger to guard you. No, that's fine. But I'm but I'm asking, do the drow, do the drow patrol this way? He says that there's no real need to patrol. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not their job. And, I mean, there's no, there's no danger from the patrol 4, really. Um, but he couldn't say one way or the other. Okay. He'd if the teleportation circle is done, whatever other dealings uh, they're doing up there, he doesn't have a lot of knowledge of. Behind the walls of fire, which Alostro has the ability to remove, and so do the drow. Yeah. That's where Alostro knows from the early days of Jandar's reign. There are portals to other places in the city of Brass, and a few places off plane that are fighting pits. This is an area that Elsie Clone would have been marched through. Yeah. To one of the fighting pits. So I do recognize the the, the, the crystal? Uh, no, because you were always marched through blindfolded. Okay. Do we do we have your permission to use one of those portals? He says that the permission is not his to give, but that he no, will but, not but lower you, the wall for you. That's what, okay, that's what I asked. So he won't do that. Okay. So... Keelian this entire time has been staring at this crystal. Yep. Uh, he starts to walk over to it, not with any hostile tent, but just sort of fascinated. Yeah. Um, how far do they let him go? I mean, you can walk all the way up to where they're standing before okay. they will block your passage further. Okay. So you can get right up under their legs. And he's still staring at the crystal, and he goes, You said the... Drow use necromancy? Some form of dark magic to protect the the passage in and out of the caves from above, yes. Should we burn the drow bodies in their church then? He says, by the words of Emix, it is our duty to burn all evil. Killian nods. Great, okay. sounds great. So what's next? But what, what I'd like to do is just like kind of make camp in this little area over here. Okay. What I was what I was thinking is since you can make a dome of forest, right? That yeah. the only person who can't walk in and out of it is you, right? Right. Right. You could just make the dome of forest near the cliff, and then we could cover it with rubble, and then the rest of us could get in. Okay. I'll try to camouflage it. Right. So is that is that the plan? Is to take a long rest inside the tiny the hut? Camouflage, yeah, camouflage tiny hut. I will let you guys make one hide check. Well, I'll let you pick either hide or de- or deception, whichever you have that's better. Uh, the party can make one. That person can make it at advantage because they'll have help. Riot is not allowed to make the check or help right. because she'll be inside the hut. Before we do that, um, I want to ask Elsie Clone. I've been saving those. I've been saving my uh, my cast of Dimension Door. We can go get your friend right now. I'll stick on nods. I'm all for it. And Happy says, what do you mean? I'm right here. <laughs> I'm no worse for wear. Why do we need to take a rest? Uh, Happy, have you looked at yourself recently? Oh, it's a flesh wound. Pull me to the next testicles. <laughs> I don't think they would like that very much. I'll see Clone j- nods over toward the fire giants. The blood on your hands, you're just going to slip right off. 
So you're going to go back to the south and attempt to rescue the guy out of the cage? Yeah. Now, okay. now we all have to go, or our yeah, we all have to go. are going to break. Right. Mm -hmm. So what path do you use to get there? Imagine we climb back up here. Back up here, go up and around. Well, that'll take yeah. us to the, to the drow. There are other paths here that might be safer. Can we see the other map? Yeah. Because, like, we've, we've basically got the idea for this one. Like... Yeah. I mean, you can see where the map matches up and where it'll take you. Yeah. So if we, okay, Yeah, if we, we come through here, we just have to go down it's straight this down way. through here. Yeah. yeah, and we've explored yeah. this area, so we know it's it's safe. Safe-ish. But, but that wasn't long. That wasn't Safer. very long ago. It wasn't very long ago, which is why I want to do it now, before reinforcements arrive. Yeah. Right. That's fair. I'm totally good for that. Okay. Random encounter. You guys make it to... Uh, down to the edge of the pool without incident. Okay. I mean, Keely and stubs his toe, but that's to be expected. Alright, so how is this going to work? Several curse words come out. Oh, it's real easy. I dimension door up to that cage, grab the guy, and dimension door back. That cage is 60 feet away. A dimension door's got a range of 500 feet, my friend. It's that well cage within is 500 feet. 60 feet away, though. <laughs> like, perhaps. As the person here who most recently almost broke the, uh, the ring. Uh huh. Let me mention that that cage is 60 feet away, and I said, because you go up there, you're going to break it. Ah, uh, good point. I'll need somebody. Um, you could fly. Halfway in between is an intermediary. You have your flying abilities now, right? I I could in an hour. We'd have what? to wait an hour. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> what's uh what's what's Elsie Clone's jump jump distance like? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking here. Does, does anybody here have a climbing speed? I think our non-existent party member does. <laughs> oh, I thought Keely and then, then we don't. Um. See, do I have? Do I have that super movement stuff that I have for? You have breath of the wind. I do. Or not breath of the wind? Is it or step of the wind? Step of the wind. Yeah. How does that Je work? My, uh, I, I can burn a key point. I can take disengage or dash as a bonus action, and my jump distance is doubled for the turn. Isn't it tripled? I thought it was tripled. It says doubled here in the player's okay. handbook. Alright, All right. so if I'm putting this together, our plan is uh, Cyclone jumps into the lava with his ability to walk on lava. <laughs> walks oh. over to here. Oh. Jumps oh. onto the wall and, like, sticks there. Well, it's then... jump... One, two, three... Oh, this is these are not steps, right? These are cages. I've yeah, I've been looking at these wrong the whole time. Then yeah, there's yeah, there, I would, there's, there's no there. steps thinking, here. There's no pillars. These thinking, are cages Cyclone hanging from above. I'm moving Elsa Clone's piece to signify what I think he should do, and not as actually moving him. Okay, okay. I'm just putting that clear. He comes over here, jumps onto this wall mm -hmm. at a rough height with this, and then he'll be within sixty feet of us, and he'll be within sixty feet of the cage. How far down is the lava from here? It's about 70 feet. Oh, from, from there? Well, it's 70 feet from the bridge down to the lava. The cages are hanging slightly below the bridge. And then it's 15 or 20 feet from this ledge to this area horizontally. So, I mean, you got Page Pythagoras to get the actual distance. I'm going to call it 70 feet just for ease of use. So, right. I will. this plan will hinge on LC Clone making a strength check to be able to grab that wall and hang onto it long enough for Riot to get in and out. Right, if LC only... Clone fails that strength check, he'll fall into the lava, and it'll he'll break everybody's resistance. Right, he'll be fine, because he can stand the lava, the right? Lava. Right, we'll at least give him one Bark Inspiration die for this. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm but, down but, for that. but to be clear here, if he falls into the lava, he's not going to die. No. Now, provided he has his ultra self up and he's concentrating on it, he'll be fine. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what I'm going to so do. So the danger is... Wait, can't he just swim into the lava then? 
Yeah, she's sure, got his ultra he self up. But then he'll be 70 feet from the cage, and that won't solve anything. The oh, idea okay. is to get him on the wall so he's at a good Z, I, Z okay. axis. Here's the danger, yeah. LC clone. Okay. If you fall mm-hmm. from, say, 30 or 40 feet up, you'll take falling damage hitting the surface and of the lava, draw. and if that breaks your concentration, you are dead. There is yeah. no there's no damage roll for falling in lava. That's <laughs> the risk you run. <laughs> we're going, we're using the supplement from last week. Yeah, so, but it's but it's so also clone. I'm, yeah, so I'm still giving you that bark inspiration, no matter what you need it for. Now here's the now here's the here's the wrinkle that I have for Brick Road. Slow fall. Do you have that? That would do. that would preclude the falling damage. Yes. Oh, you would okay. not oh, you so would not take good, falling yeah. damage if you slow fall down. Yeah. So I think this is a good plan. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a right. good That is a good I'm, plan. I am now all, on board. All of Mahogany's plans involve things sticking to walls, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, LC clone. all the players on board. Keelan just didn't give a shit. <laughs> just so we're clear. How does LC clones tr- uh, alter self into, like, a fire transformation? How does that manifest? What does that look like? No, I, I could I could be uncreative and just say he looks like the Human Torch now, but no. <laughs> he just gets red hair and nothing else. <laughs> it, it just pokes out the top of his mask. It just goes. Yeah. Like, I do want to mention, mm-hmm. uh, because I know McDole has not had a chance to peruse the Seventh Sea book yet. I don't know if he's going to buy it, but there is a secret society called Los Vagabundos, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, they're they're just LC clone. <laughs> Nice. In seventh C, it's wonderful. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I suddenly might reconsider my decision to stay and sit out. Of, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, I think it's even funnier if it doesn't poke out of his mask and like his hair just turns red, but none of us can see it. <laughs> he gets like the gigantic <laughs> South Park red afro, but it's all contained under his mask. His mask. <laughs> so, LC clone, mm-hmm. you go ahead and use Alter Self to yeah, gain immunity to, to the water. Sure make sure I, I can do that later. I mean, lava is like viscous enough that you don't e- you don't even like splash down oh, into it. I can it. help this out. I'm I'll cast grace him. Okay. Okay. Falls lower than twenty feet. He he won't take damage from the first twenty feet of a fall. Oh okay. wait, yeah. Well, there's there is something else I can do too. Um, in addition to the uh, in addition to the bardic inspiration, you can have shark strength. <laughs> oh, that's right, because you've got enhanced ability on your on yeah, the staff. trident. Um, I, I, I just I just came up with it. it like it, like bodily, he doesn't seem to change much, but the 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 stylized patterning on his mask, which is shaped made after a hawk, changes to a phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. That sounds Wait, are you like the uh... your mask is now a part of your form, just formed with chaos matter, because that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> it's his actual face now. Yeah, like it's your face. Like that's fucking. So, I like it. it's badass. Lava is it's actually viscous enough. You can like walk out onto it. You won't sink into it unless you stand in one spot for long. Okay. And the flames aren't going to damage you. So you go ahead and you climb up. Go ahead and make that strength check. Uh, so what bonus does he get from shark strength? Uh, I'm looking that up right now. Right? Advantage. Advantage on strength checks. Okay. We're okay. setting up this entire plan. And I think plan, he can carry more, but that's and not whatever is in the cage is going to be the most hostile creature you can imagine. <laughs> okay, hang on one second. Let me just uh, let me just ask. Uh, can I add a uh, can I add athletics to this, or is it just straight up strength? No, athletics would apply. It's climbing. Okay then. All right then. Advantage on that plus five is either a nat one or a nat two. <laughs> oh, that's Jesus Christ. Okay, so forget, are... you have you have the bar inspiration. This was the time to fall because you're still on the floor. <laughs> yeah. It's more like he's trying to climb up and can't get a good grasp. Yeah. Damn it! What? Move over a little bit. Try again. <laughs> Move over a couple feet and okay. Just give it another crack. No, you know what? Fuck those dice. I don't care what those rolls are. <laughs> Fuck these dice. You rolled a fourteen. Now, here come the ones. Yep, here we go. Oh my god! <laughs> wow! Wow! That's what you get. That's what you get. Your hubris. I'm so embarrassed for <laughs> you right now. So, everybody roll initiative. Like, really? Like, really? 
That's funny. Like for realsies. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, I got a twenty on my initiative. That's cool. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, your twenty blocked me, and I got a two. I got a one. Riot once again makes yourself look good by making everyone else look bad. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's how she did. That's how she do. I mean, this is a great plan. It and was. The dice just hate me. You rolled four. All right. Four dice, and none of them came up bingo. No, I mean it was double one and two. I stop, move over, another one and two. That that is that is Riot. what? Yeah. What you got? I got twenty two. Keelian. Five. <laughs> Oops. Misspelled Keelian. Elsie Clone. Fourteen. And the other guy. Seven. And what did Happy get? Thirteen. <laughs> your repeated attempts to climb this wall and falling back down you're sending reverberations through the molten rock of the cave and our good friend I'll use one of these this is, this is fine giant flame skull head one of them bursts forth from the lava in the back of the cave and gets to go first Uh, I need to look up a spell real quick. Ah, uh, shit. This was such a good plan. It was a it was. good plan. This was so we, good. We, we, so we used all the right resources. <laughs> we, 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 like... we did. <laughs> yeah. Elsie Clone. What's up? How you doing? Uh, not too great. Can't climb a wall to save my life. <laughs> 13, force damage. Uh, how so? The flame skull fired magic missiles at you. Magic missile? That is rude as... F you're, you're standing on lava, so it Ooh, knows better. I don't really like this. I don't like it either. Oh, God. What's oh, your con? Bardic Inspiration. Bardic Inspiration right now. What did you roll yeah. on the con save? Um, I rolled a, uh, um, an 8 plus 3 is 11, so I barely make concentration. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it knows better than to fire its flame ray at you because you're standing on the lava. But oh, you are in a world of danger at the moment. So how much damage was that? Oh, 13? 13 damage. Four damage. Okay. All right. <laughs> and technically, the save was a little easier because it was from three separate rays, so it's actually three saves that are just DC oh. 10. Fuck that noise. I don't want it. But that's fine. That. You can make the one save against all of it. It's fine. Thank you, Brick Road. I don't want you to lose the character because you failed a DC 10 con save. Although, <laughs> that would be pretty funny. See, that's the thing. It's his, it's Elsa clone. He can't lose the character because of that. No, I'm going to lose the character <laughs> he's because a he's going to turn into a... He's going to turn into a fucking... Like... He's gonna turn it. No, I know, he's gonna turn into a goddamn Pokemon. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Was Nodal here the week that I read the table, the, the reincarnate table I'll be using? I think you know you read that like <laughs> on my stream some, yeah. at some point. Uh, right. Oh yeah, you're, I you're right. I haven't heard it. Uh, Elsie right. Clone is in severe danger. Riot's out. Riot's out. <laughs> Peace out. Right. Also in severe danger, and she knows Elsie Clone can run. Elsie Clone. Elsie Clone's like, running. I'm going like a double double move. Basically. Okay. Elsie Clone's running. Happy. Uh, he's he's going he's going that way too. I buy that because skulls don't have any balls. Don't run too far. No, I know. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't run too far. <laughs> Mahogany. It's a start. general yeah. reminder for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Peace. Peace out. Yeah. And Keelian. Just to be doubly sure, Keelian's gonna fire a bolt here. Use the command word. Explode a cloud of darkness. And okay. then run. And as Keelian's running up the steps, you hear an explosion behind you from the area where you put the darkness. Hmm. So what's next? Are you guys retreating back to... Original yeah. plan. Take a nap. Yeah, yeah. original plan. <laughs> original Sorry, plan. We, can't, we, can't, we can't get the dude. God damn it, I wish we could, but... <laughs> it just was not in the cards today. 
The cards fired. are fine. It was the dice. The that... dice. The yeah. dice All right. So, okay, so somebody who's not Elsa clone will roll for this hide check. Yeah. yeah well. Either hide or deception. You can make this an advantage, but Riot can't be on either part of it. Right. Uh, I only have um, a plus two to either of those. Uh, I can my... give advantage on whatever roll this is. They're, they'll have advantage anyway because my deception uh, they have and help. stealth are the same. They're both yeah. plus ten. I'm pretty sure Skelion's the one. To Ke do this. Yeah, Skelion's going to be the one to do this. Like he's hit, a, he's hit in a pile of trash before. I think this should be much easier. <laughs> Let's call it deception because that's more fun. There that's, we go. There's the nat 20. <laughs> this is the role we should have had, both of those. Not only does Keelian manage to camouflage this hut under various rubble, uh, I mean, he's directing Happy and Mahogany where to place the bits of rock and whatnot. <laughs> but not only... When he's standing on the outside, you see just an indistinguishable section of wall. But on the inside, he's left just enough cracks and just enough places that you have perfect vision all the way out into the cave. Nice. Killian, this is artisanal work here. <laughs> <laughs> I have experience. So, let's go ahead and take a 15-minute snaggling break. That this sounds seems, good. It's a little earlier than I usually take it, but this is a good pause in the in the yeah. story.